Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think somebody has to disrupt this cosy consensus a little, and that person is going to be me. When I started as head of a journalism school just over four years ago at City University London, thank you, I was very taken with the teaching hospital idea. It was just becoming fashionable about four or five years ago, and I thought this was exactly the right thing, and I bashed my colleagues very hard about doing and thinking in this way. But I'm just beginning to wonder, and Eric's talk has focused this idea a bit for me, about whether we ought to be shifting the emphasis a bit. Because we now know a little bit more, not much, as Eric and both Jeroen uh, reminded us, we don't know a great deal, but we know a bit more about what it's going to take to help and improve journalism. I would argue, and I've, I hope this will be the only time I'll mention this, I have argued this in detail in a book just out, that really the key <laughs> is experimentation. On the focus for the ideal conditions for experiment. That was what developed journalism in the past, and that is what is going to have to develop it now. It's not that experiment isn't part of the teaching hospital idea. Eric reminded us that it was. But doctors don't usually experiment on patients, even if trainee doctors may practice on them. Experimenting may be more suitable for images like throwing spaghetti at the wall to see which bits stick. And don't forget, most of the spaghetti ends up on the floor. So I agree with Eric about the first aid. I agree with Eric about the clinics. I think I'd like to just quickly point out to Eric that in Britain, we are a bit further ahead, I think. I'm guessing here, I'm inferring from what Eric is saying about journalism schools in the United States. I think we're a little bit further ahead. On Eric's, I was a little bit confused about whether Eric's checklist for teaching hospital had five items or six. But if it's five, I think my school passes on four of them. If it's six, we get about four and a half. We're a little bit weak on the labs, and I'll come back to that in a second. And our community connection is not absolutely perfect. But I do have more than 300 students doing intensively taught practice-based MAs. We do not have communications and media in the title of my school. It's entirely deliberate. If what you want to concentrate on is communications and media sociology, you go across the street to the sociology department. And we are, there is obviously some overlap, but it is fairly limited. Our journalists are out on the street all the time. We have a hyperlocal site based on the street where we are addresses, St. John Street in central London. I have students from the entrepreneurial journalism module going into the Bauer magazine empire next summer to innovate 20 or 30 of them, and they will be doing the same in BBC magazines. We were the first British journalism school to have an entrepreneurial journalism module. About 10% of the students complain vociferously to me about this model and say, I did not go to journalism school to be taught about how to start a business. And I say, tough shit. That's what you're getting. And we do, uh, and shortly, somebody is going to start, uh, under new arrangements made by the government, a London local TV station, and I hope our students will be helping from that once I have convinced the people running it that we are not providing free slave labor. Somebody who had started their own magazine in Cambridge, who came as a master's student to us a couple of years ago, went through the entrepreneurial journalism module and got his team together, and they hammered around his idea for an online magazine for students called The Tab. And as he emerged from that course, he picked up £100,000 sterling of development money for it. So I think we can say that we're in first aid and we're in clinics. And I want to concentrate on the third part of Eric's argument, which was about labs. Why are labs hard, not impossible necessarily, but hard to develop in universities? Well, firstly, universities are inherently uneasy with the idea I'm going on a journey into the unknown. Want to come? It's not quite what universities are comfortable with. And they come up with idiot phrases like knowledge journalism at Harvard. 
I mean, knowledge journalism, what's the opposite? Ignorance journalism? What a daft phrase. <laughs> Universities like quantifiable results, fact, truth, uncertainty reduced. These are all admirable things in many ways. They like research outputs, as they are known in English. Or, sorry, they're known in the British higher education system, I should say. They, that they can measure and that they can rank. Research has to be published under peer review. Nothing wrong with the peer review system, except that it's very slow. Now, labs, or the idea of labs, only fit this up to a point. There is some overlap. Oh, and another thing about universities. If British universities are anything to go by, they are absolutely lousy at cooperation between faculties. <laughs> so, I am, in my work at the moment, trying to concentrate on solving these kinds of problems that I have just listed, because I'm zeroed in on the lab bit of what we might call the Newton triad. Now, universities used to be better at hosting this kind of wide-ranging, serendipitous curiosity. And one thing we have to do with universities, I think, is to cajole, bribe, incentivize, and indeed threaten them if you can find the way, to think more widely and more imaginatively about this. I have a great advantage in London in that my university happens to be located next to the closest thing that Britain has got to Silicon Valley. We call it Silicon Roundabout. And uh, it's more formally known as Tech City. But there are a lot of new businesses starting down there. And it provides some great opportunities for us to push out the teaching hospital model so I'm just wondering whether the teaching hospital model, or slogan if I may, should be replaced by a large banner across our front door that says, help people throw spaghetti. It's very good to hear of what the Knight Foundation is doing in the United States. We could do with one in Europe. And actually, Eric, I really think you should be aiming for global domination. Go on, <laughs> go global. <laughs> Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, if journalism schools don't adapt in these kinds of ways, journalism will simply redevelop and reinvent itself without journalism schools being part of that process. Don't forget that people can influence the journalism of the future with ideas and resources, but nobody directs it centrally. It was always like that until an exceptional period in the late 20th century when advertising revenue kept both print and broadcast going, stuff had to be reinvented all the time. Did I mention this book? I think I did. <laughs> and actually, I also argue in that book that I think the corner has been turned. Journalism doesn't look like it used to, but the old combination of entrepreneurial invention and civic democratic drive or obligation, if you prefer, is still there. It's still there even if a number of journalism schools are having trouble seeing it. Thank you for your attention. I look forward to your questions.